This will really enhance your skills and save you a ton of money. This might sell you on ground instruction and how important it is uh, for the rest of your flying career. I'm Jason Miller, a full-time professional flight instructor. On the Finer Points channel, you can join me as I bring you tips and tricks that I've learned from 20 years on the flight line. Hello aviators, welcome back to the Finer Points. Crazy times we're living through, my friends. I hope everybody is staying safe, uh, staying healthy. My family's out here at Pinnacles National Park. We were fortunate enough to get out of San Francisco before they imposed any travel bans, and uh, we're trying to practice some social distancing. <laughs> Um, but I know a lot of people are quarantined at home and I want you to know that the content is going to continue to come over the next few weeks um, and there's lots of things you can do to think about flying, to get better at flying and all of the practice that I'm going to suggest will actually save you money on flying as well. So in this video we're going to look at a ground lesson that I'm doing with Joe um, and ground lessons are really important. I think in a lot of places ground lessons get overlooked. Um, where I learned to fly in a place like Chicago Ground lessons are built in because there's so many days you can't actually fly. Um, but in California, I really have to kind of force my students and say, hey, every now and again, we need to do some ground because you need to think this stuff through when your processor isn't spinning. So in this lesson, you're gonna see us practice a few things. Chart symbology, uh, we're gonna look at needle navigation, holding pattern entries we're gonna practice a lot of, and then how to actually fly the hold. So, tips and tricks on how you actually fly the hold, rules of thumb. All right, so let's dive into that now. How do you feel about chart symbols on the low altitude and root chart? Um, you know, that's one thing I haven't really dived into. Okay, no worries. So well, I've, I'll take... I've glanced over it, um, I've read it once, I've, you know, I've looked at the, the keys uh, once or twice, but I don't think I have them memorized. So, but uh, but I've got I've got the basics though. Let's just say that. Okay, great. Um, well, let's start with just some basic stuff. Like here, looking at um, let's just pick any sort of airway. This is Victor twenty five eighty seven here, and uh, we see. I think you and I have done this once before, but let's just review a little bit. There's a five thousand foot number here. Do you know what that is? That's the MEA, right? That is, that is in fact the MEA. And then you'll be asked, what are you guaranteed when you're flying at the MEA? Uh, obstacle clearance, 1,000 feet over regular terrain, 2,000 over mountainous terrain, uh, and um, navigation signals. Excellent, good. And I always ask people, I've asked you this before, are you ever guaranteed communication? Nope. Good, all right. Underneath that, we see a little asterisk and a 4,000 foot symbol. I mean, a 4,000 foot number, do you know what that is? I don't. That's only obstruction clearance, not nav signals. So we call that the MOCA, minimum obstruction clearance altitude. Okay. So if you had a problem, for example, you were picking up ice and the freezing level's at 5,000, you know that if you fly at 4,000, you're not gonna hit anything. So for whatever reason I need to descend, at 4,000, I won't hit anything, but no longer guaranteed the navigation signals. Correct. Good. Now, if we look along this little segment of the airway, over here by Santi, you see it has this perpendicular end cap, but over here by Mover, it doesn't. That tells you that the MEA is about to change. The little end cap is the MEA change. That's correct. So when you see this little perpendicular end cap here, you know that the MEA is about to change to something else. Okay. Good. All right. And over here by mover, the MEA does not change. So there's no little end cap. Okay. Got it. Good. Underneath the Victor 2587 symbol, there's an 11. Do you know what that is? Is that the distance for that segment? It is. It's the distance in this case from Santi to mover, just that one little segment. Okay. The five, six, the 56 in the square is the actual total distance from nav aid to nav aid. So if you zoom out here, 56 represents the distance from the Salinas VOR to the Woodside VOR. 
All the way up there. I see. Got it. And if you add up all those little numbers, like the 13 and the 14 and the 11 and the 18, it should all equal 56. Okay. Good. Now, there's one other number I wanted to look at. There's this 29 that looks like it's circled in a D, in a delta. And that's the DME distance from the Navade that's opposite the arrowhead, basically. So this is the, that's the distance to Salinas from there. Okay, yeah, that makes sense. Right, and again, if you add up 29 and 27, you also get the 56. So this goes on for a while. We do a lot of chart symbology review. If you want to see the entire lesson, it's up at patreon.com. Uh, the whole lesson, pretty much unedited, about an hour of ground. Um, but after this, we move on to a needle visualization that I call same side, safe side. And the way this works is, you know, when you're navigating on needles, you've got your number one VOR is like your road in the sky and your number two is there to identify cross radials. So if the station that is sending the cross radial is actually on your left and the needle is lying on the left side of the case, that is they're both on the left, they're both on the same side, then you know at a glance that you have not passed that intersection yet. A way to be sure of it is your heading, like we said in the last video, will always point toward the needle if you are on your way toward that course. So that's two ways to know it. Here's how it works. So if you're on this air, airway, you're headed to the northwest, VOR number one shows that you're tracking the needle in the center, right? Looking at um, VOR yep. number two, okay. yep. have you crossed the station yet? Like, have you crossed okay, that so second? Showing the... Okay, so this station is, assuming the station is to our left, so we've got a from indication, so I'd say no, we haven't. Excellent. And what's one other way that you would know that you haven't, just for redundancy? Okay, so my heading is, what is that? Uh, Zero, um, one, zero, two, three, something like that? Something like that, yeah. Okay, so if I look at that on the VOR number two, I could see that I'm heading towards that needle if I point my airplane that direction, if I look at my heading on VOR number two. Excellent, good. So you're still headed toward it. And then I'll zoom out here to show you that that's in fact correct. So that's the circumstance right there. Okay, got it. And watch what happens when I fly that airplane up the airway. Watch the number two radio. This makes sense. It starts to come in. And now if you were looking at a checklist or something and you were distracted and you looked down immediately, you would know, wait a minute, I crossed that radial because it's not, same, it. it's not same side safe anymore. And my heading is now going away from the needle. That means I crossed it. So then we dive into holding patterns. And remember I said in the last video, you really don't need to be near an airplane to work on this. So this is something you can work on with your CFI while you're at home in quarantine. It'll be good work for them. Good review for you. Um, but all you need is a picture of a heading indicator. And what we're going to do here is first visualize the hold. Then we're going to verify the hold using the thumb method and then think in front of the airplane using the five T's. Check it out. All right, 410 Bravo Sierra, I have holding instructions, advise ready to copy. Okay, 410 Bravo Sierra, ready to copy. All right, 410 Bravo Sierra, I need you to hold southwest of the ABC VOR on the 210 degree radio, make left turns, please. Maintain 7,000 and expect further clearance at 2130 Zulu. Okay, 410 Bravo Sierra, so hold southwest of the ABC VOR on the 210 degree radial left turns, 7,000 feet. Expect further clearance at 2130 Zulu. Uh, 410 Bravo Sierra, the readback is correct. So now we do a, I would do a teardrop then in this guy. Excellent. Sorry, yeah, teardrop. Yeah, teardrop. Good, and then so, and I just want to make sure too that you're guessing first um, and using thumb second. So you would see it like this. You would see the left hand turn like that, and um, and since you're coming up from the bottom, it makes sense that you would do a teardrop. Okay, I see what you're saying. Just visualize visualize a pattern on the on the instrument, and then draw the lines with a 20 degree offset yeah and then as a second thing see see your thumb up there see it and go yes that's a teardrop okay and those are sort of the two 
that's the redundant part of it, right? Yeah, I see. Okay, good. And so let's just do the five T's for when you get there. Okay, so when I reach the ABC VOR, I will turn. So, okay, so this is a teardrop. I'm going to turn um, 210. So I will turn to 240. Good, left or right? Start. I would turn, sorry, I would turn left to 240, start a timer for one minute. Um, twist my inbound course of 030. Um, bottle down to holding speed and report entering the hold to ATC. Excellent, that's great. The last thing that Joe and I got into was like rules of thumb once you're established in the holding pattern. There are a few rules of thumb that will help you nail your holding course at one minute. And um, there's just some golden rules to really remember about holding patterns. Now you're established in the pattern. Um, there's just a couple rules of thumb uh, for being in the pattern. One is if you figure out on your inbound course, let's say you intercept a pattern and you're flying in and you realize I need a 10 degree wind correction to hold this needle. So I'm actually flying like this, right? I've got some kind of wind out of the north, northwest. I need a 10 degree correction. The rule of thumb says you will triple that connection, that correction on the outbound leg. So if it's That's 10, the direction, if it's, I see. yeah, if it's 10 degrees when you're inbound, you cross the fix, you turn left, you know, in a, in a normal world, you'd be going to 210, but you're actually going to stop at 240 because you're tripling that, con that correction. And the pattern won't really look like a racetrack in real life. It'll look like a teardrop, but that's because when you make this next turn, the wind is going to be at your back and you'll pick up your ground speed. Oh, I see. Cause it's a, it's a, um, what do you say? A standard rate turn on both sides. So yeah, the wind's going to mess you up. Very good, man. That's, a, that's exactly right. That's exactly right. Cause you have to account for both the outbound leg and both turns. And that's why you triple it. All right, aviators. That's all for this episode of the finer points. A huge thanks to Joe for allowing me to publish his flight training to the internet for your benefit. Um, and also a huge thanks to the sponsors and to the patrons without that support, these videos just wouldn't be possible. Um, I'm very happy to be able to bring you some ideas to things you can work on while you're at home in quarantine during this crazy time. Um, it'll be good work for your CFIs and excellent practice for you. This will really enhance your skills and save you a ton of money. This might sell you on ground instruction and how important it is uh, for the rest of your flying career. So take some of those ideas, call your CFI, schedule a, a Google Hangout or a Skype session and, and you can get a lot done. So big thanks to Michael Bazaar for the music. A huge thanks to you, the best fans on the internet for watching this video. I'm gonna be doing a lot of, of publishing during this downtime. I'm doing a lot of live Instagram, so you can find me at Learn the Finer Points. Um, I'm gonna start doing some webinars, probably weekly. So to keep uh, in, in touch with everything that I'm gonna be doing over the next month or so, you can visit learnthefinerpoints.com, check out our, our Patreon page or listen to the podcast, find me on Instagram, um, any other way you can find to stay in touch. I hope that you all are staying safe, staying healthy, you're with people you love, and until next time, be safe, and when you fly again, fly your best. Oh,